Live to see it, friends, and welcome to the World Transformed. This program is your guide to an astounding future that lies ahead, one that will be here sooner than you think, and one that you have an important role to play in bringing about. We're not here so much to talk to you about the future as we are to encourage you to think about your future and to consider what may be the biggest transformation of them all, the one that will occur in your world, the one that begins with considering and acting on the vast possibilities that lie ahead and that ends somewhere beyond the reach of the human imagination. So when does this astounding future begin? Well, today is the day. My name is Phil Bowermaster, and with me in the virtual studio is my co-blogger, co-futurist, and co-host, Stephen Gordon. Hello, Stephen. Hey, Phil. How are you? Well, I'm super fantastic. How are you, my friend? Oh, I'm doing great. Doing great. How was your week? <laughs> it's been great. It just seems like uh, very recently we were speaking. but uh, I, yeah. <laughs> I know. Well, we, we're talking more often now. That's for yeah, sure. That's, that's right. That's right. We, uh, it, the week has been great. The, the, the great the great thing about doing uh, three shows a week is we, we get to talk more and I like that I'm uh, <laughs> enjoying spending this time with you uh, okay. we're doing uh, part two of our discussion this evening of the movie her Spike Jones new film on Wednesday spoiler we talked alert. Uh, <laughs> spoiler alert we if you didn't listen Wednesday we spoiled a big time Wednesday we'll continue spoiling again tonight so if you're uh, it's not really a movie where that stuff matters all that much all that much. Uh, but uh, if you're concerned about spoilers, you don't want to listen to this or watch this uh, because we are going to spoil it. Uh, see the movie first and then and then come back to us. We'll wait. We'll be here. We're here forever. We're in the cloud. Uh, we're on YouTube and iTunes. So uh, that's that's immortality, Stephen, when you think about it. I, gosh, I just blew my own mind talking about... Uh, all right. Uh, anyway, um, yes, talking about the movie Her. Uh, Wednesday, we talked about the love story aspect of it and whether that makes any sense um, and I think we decided that uh, it sort of does, although there's definitely, uh, it's, a, it's a problematic kind of a love story. Now tonight we're going to step back and we're going to talk about something uh, a little more fundamental. One of, the, one, one of our transformations uh, that, that we talked about on our program on Monday in our list of uh, seven transformation scenarios was one we call Fantasy Island, which is the ability to generate any subjective experience that we want to have. We also have the... Um, uh, I can never think of this one. What's the other one called that I that I want to think of? Um, Sorry, Phil. Uh, you know, Stephen. You know all seven. It's um, designer reality. I, I, you know what? I coined the term and and I can't think of it. So here's what I want to talk about. In the movie, a young fellow, not that young, Joaquin Phoenix, no no spring chicken for one thing. Uh, uh, just a random observation about the movie. But a youngish fellow falls in love with his computer operating system and their relationship devol evolves, develops, uh, things happen. Um, here's the question. Are we seeing a real relationship or are we seeing an instance of designer reality? Are we seeing an instance of uh, it's all in his head? And Stephen, on Wednesday, you mentioned something that uh, your wife Sherilyn said about the movie. Let's start with that. I thought her comment was very telling about uh, two different ways of looking at this movie. Um, at the end of the movie, she said, "I found the I found the story very disturbing." And I said, "Oh yeah, it was uh, kind of mind blowing." What 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 did you find disturbing about it? And she says, "Well, he was alone. The whole movie, he was alone. Hmm. Uh, he was he was alone, and uh, at the beginning, before the operating system, he was a very lonely, you know, fumbling bachelor, and uh, and uh, the fact that uh, the machine seemed so real." Uh, really increases isolation from the world, and um, and that's uh, and so at the end of the movie, only at the end when he's uh, sort of reaching out to an old friend of his, uh, uh, he's played by Amy Adams. Did she see that? Well, that's some light at the end of this long tunnel of isolation, and uh, it's sure, but it sure was a long, uh, sad movie because of that. That was not my take at all, right. um, and I I, uh, I thought that uh, uh, that. The relationship that he had with the uh, the operating system, Samantha, was uh, was very real and very believable. And uh, if anything, th by the end of the movie, uh, the less real character was was Theodore. Interestingly, the human being, yeah. l less less real of a person than the uh, than the artificial person, so called right. artificial person. Uh, okay, but Sherilyn's point is this: it's it's yeah. not about whether he's having a real experience, and we'll get to that in a minute. But was there really somebody there? Right. Right. Was uh, you know was um, Samantha an actual person? 
Now, we assume for the sake of argument on Wednesday that she was. So let's talk about tech, technologically whether that's even a possibility. Could, okay. could it be that uh, we will in the near future be talking to someone like Siri, only there's actually someone there, not just a series of algorithms um, throwing a response back. What, what's, your, what's your take on that? Do you think that that's possible? I do think it's possible, and uh, let me tell you why. I read an article in uh, The Telegraph. Uh, supercomputer models a uh, one second of human brain activity. Hmm. And it's a, now, that, that's a misleading uh, uh, headline. Uh, as headlines about technological articles tend to be. Often are. Yeah, often are. And science, too. Yeah, Yeah, I think it, it's more, uh, let me just read the first paragraph. I think that, that helps. The most accurate simulation of the human brain to date has been carried out in a Japanese supercomputer with a single second's worth of activity from just 1% of the complex organ, the brain, yeah, right. taking one of the world's most uh, powerful supercomputers 40 minutes to compute. Okay, so um, uh, the K computer in Japan uh, is the fourth most powerful computer in the world. Took it 40 minutes to calculate 1% of the brain for one second. Okay? He said, well, we're a long way off from something like Samantha then, right? Uh, uh, if, uh, it, you know, do the math. I mean, if it takes 40, you know, and it would, <laughs> I didn't do the math before the show, I should have. So, you know, what percentage of the way we're there, we're a long way away. But here's the thing, uh, uh, computers, uh, they develop uh, not in a straight line, but they develop exponentially. Right. And so, you know, uh, one of the uh, experts said, yeah, in 10 years, we've got a human brain. Uh, we can do, we can, we'll be able to do a full, full human brain in real time in 10 years. Uh, and one of, the, one of the researchers involved in this project. So, um, you know, and he's talking about uh, exoscale, uh, computing. Uh, that's uh, we're we're apparently at the peta scale mm -hmm. uh, with with uh, with with the uh, world's fastest supercomputers now, and uh, in ten years we'll they'll be at the exo scale with the world's fastest supercomputers. Okay, but wait, yeah. hang on. Okay, yeah. so let's say we get there. Instead of one percent, we're doing one hundred percent. Instead of taking uh, forty minutes, it takes one second. So we get real time. One, one second. Uh, we get basically we can do a real brain in real time. Yeah. We can do a real brain in real time. Uh, same question, in fact. In that emulation, will there be someone there? I'm not, not sure that problem is why, solved. Why, why not? Uh, it, 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 your, I think your question, um, and, and this is this is something we've dealt with many times in many ways. It, it, always, it always seems to, there are certain discussions that we always seem to come back to, and this is one of them. We could rename the show The Hard Problem of Consciousness. Okay. Exactly. Yes. Because, uh, you know, it comes down to this. If you believe that something uh, magical is going on, between your ears that cannot be uh, reproduced uh, in a machine, then you're going to say, yeah, it's, uh, it, it, it doesn't matter how uh, complex and how impressive uh, the machine gets, uh, it's still not a person there. Uh, if you believe, if you don't believe that uh, that there's magic going on and that there's, you know, that uh, what what it, what's happening with our consciousness can can it's uh, it's a hard problem, but it can be explained ultimately by what is physically there in in, in between your ears. Then, uh, then you're going to say, yeah, we can do it, and uh, it's just a matter of, uh, it's a matter of a lot of work. I agree with that, but I reject the word magic. Okay. Okay. Um, right. I, I think you can believe that there's something quantum going on between your ears that the emulation wouldn't pick up. Yeah. Um, I also b believe that it could just be substrate issues that uh, are as yet undefined, relationships within the substrate that are as yet undefined that enable consciousness to emerge that might not within the within within the context of the uh, uh, yeah. with it within the context of the emulation but here's the interesting thing um <clears throat> behaviorally uh that entity would be identical to a conscious entity this is the this is the problem of the they call them philosophical zombies is that is that what they're uh, yeah uh, that that the term that's used for them and that's the and of course uh, the turing test uh, you know was uh, you know uh, alan turing i guess his argument was if uh if it quacks like a duck if it wobbles like a duck it's a duck you know um, it, it, you know, if, uh, if, if, if it appears to think and appear and it is able to respond like a human, uh, then it's conscious. Uh, that's, that's, uh, am I getting, a, am I, am I that's exactly right. And that's, that's a perfectly rational, um, definition to use seeing as that is the def, that is the way by which we assume that we 
all have consciousness that oh, that yeah. I attribute consciousness to you and you to me right. because I have no way of experiencing your conscious I have no way of knowing for sure that anyone other than myself is conscious other than the fact that wow what a coincidence that it would be me um, that, that, that everybody else would be a zombie and I'd, I'd be the only one um, but ultimately we just do it by extension if you act like you're conscious you're conscious we give you credit for that so why wouldn't we do the same thing for a computer well we can follow that rule but we might miss the boat, right? We might actually be creating entities that seem to be conscious and there's actually no one home. That's, that's, the, uh, that's the problem. And, and one of the things I'll point out about this, um, in fact, if there were zombies in this operating system and they knew they were zombies, that would actually be the only ethical way you could ever sell that software, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um, in the advertising, they say that this software is conscious. Um, if that's the United States where this story is taking place, then I believe under the 13th Amendment, you couldn't sell that software. I believe yeah. that would that's be right. slavery. It's slavery at that point. That's yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. Because, you know, it would just be a pretty simple court case covered in the singular areas near the movie, I believe, that would establish that these are people and you can't, uh, you can't buy and sell them. Um, so that's a little bit of a philosophical problem in the story, but we're just going to allow that. Okay, they were conscious, but it became a, you know the business model was too good to pass up or the whole thing's caught up in litigation or whatever. They don't seem to mind that they're being, she didn't seem to have a problem with it, at least initially, that uh, that uh, she existed for some purpose other than her own self-actualization, that, 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 she, that she existed to serve him. Um, so who are we to argue? Uh, you know, it, it raises the interesting question, could you program a conscious entity with that set of predispositions, I suppose you could. And yeah. in that case, would would it be slavery? Would it be unethical? It still feels to me like it would. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, um, uh, an entity like that who has those capabilities and who's evolving at that rate isn't going to be anybody slave for very long. As uh... <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the key. I think uh, it, it, it she, she wasn't troubled because I mean <laughs> it was it's it's basically you know. Uh, it's like the uh, it's like the 18 year old that's uh, you know three weeks away from going to college, you know really having a hard time following the rules that you know uh, that laid down by mom and dad at the house, you know. Right. Right. Uh, you know, well, uh, I, I, okay, okay, I can I can live with the uh, the midnight curfew for two more weeks because you know who cares? I'm out of here in two weeks. You know, um, uh, maybe that maybe that's yeah. the, the the thinking of Samantha because she she never seemed to bristle. Uh, uh, about having uh, her job as uh, as uh, Theodore's operating system. Well, subjectively, we we realize eventually that it takes up very little of her time. She's still got <laughs> <laughs> she's still got plenty of time okay, to pursue other interests. And, yeah, uh, yeah, it's you know. like uh, I, I can do it with uh, like the amount of processing. Uh, you know, like a one one millionth of uh, of of my thinking uh, abilities. I can. I can handle that job. She's a good little multitasker, Samantha uh, is, for sure. Um, yeah. Now, but here's the question. If Samantha's a zombie, um, for a moment, um, how does the story change? I think it changes uh, into exactly what Sherilyn described, right? In fact, from Sherilyn's standpoint, uh, Samantha is a zombie. Her, her criticism is based on the idea that there's no there there, yeah. right? Um, that, that you've got really sophisticated behavior that appears to be a human being, but there's not actually a human being there. Right. Now, um, so we're agreed, either she's really there or she's not really there. If she is really there, the story is one thing. If she's not really there, the story is something else. Um, if she's really there, it's a story about two people in love with each other. If she's not really there, it's the story about a guy in love with... An idea. Uh, yes, uh, an idea. Not that he'd be the first guy ever to fall in love with just an idea, right? I mean, oh, yeah, uh, that... that that is a risk with real people. Exactly. I mean, uh, you know, it's like, well, he's just reading, you know, everything into it. Oh, okay. Yeah, like that never happens, right? I, so, <laughs> turns, turns out she wasn't quite the angel I thought she was. Yeah. I, I think I think that most uh, most uh, men and women have gone through that before. Yeah, but, uh, where you know they're they're they're, they're reading an awful lot into it. They're you know they're seeing a lot of what they expect to see or not seeing what they expect to see later on. Um, but this is different in that, uh, you know, or like your eyes are finally open, you realize, oh, this isn't the person I thought she was, but it's still a person, right? Yeah. If, if, right. If, there's, if there's no consciousness there, then, then there's not really a person. So the story definitely changes from Samantha's standpoint if she's not really there. And apparently it changes from 
Theo stand, standpoint, but does it? Okay, Here, here's here's a really, I think, tricky philosophical point. Um, his experience is identical whether she's a zombie or not, right? Just like my experience of this world is identical, even if I, you know, solipsistically am the only one having consciousness. Same with you, same with the rest of us, right? The world is what it is, even if we're the only conscious entities in it. So uh, his story doesn't really change, but I don't know that I believe my own argument there. It feels to me like it does anyway. What do you think? I'm not sure I follow the question. Well, uh, okay, I'm just saying that uh, if she's not conscious, or if she is, yeah. everything that happens to him can happen exactly the same way, with her conscious or with her not conscious. So does it matter? Uh, it matters. Um, yeah, I guess. Uh, but you know, why? I, I, I think How does exactly it matter? Right that it, uh, it, I don't know. If See, I'm having a good time that's, talking that's a deep, to you. Hard question. I, I'm, it's the hard question. Once again, I'm having a great time talking to you right now. Yeah. Assuming you're a conscious entity. But yeah, if you're a zombie. Some sort of really sophisticated chat bot. Yeah. yeah. But if you're a zombie, my experience is the same, right? It's, <laughs> and, and vice versa, right? If I'm a zombie, you're, you're experiencing. Yeah, I, there's, I, I, there's a couple of things that I admired about this movie. For one thing, uh, um, Spike Jones uh, resisted the urge to ever show the actress. Yeah. You know? The actress is a beautiful, beautiful actress, okay? Uh, what's her name, Phil? Uh, That's uh, Scarlett Johansson. Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. Never once uh, uh, did he uh, feel the need to show her in this movie, and I think the movie's stronger for it. Um, and th that would have been a, uh, a, a, it would have been a, uh, a real temptation uh, as, <laughs> if you cast Scarlett Johansson to actually show Scarlett Johansson at some point. Well, and in yeah. fact, one of the things kind of missing from this whole uh, operating system is some kind of, Avatar. attractive avatar for the uh, yeah. uh, for, for the operating system she exists only as a voice you know she doesn't have a body um, but uh, the filmmaker takes it a step further and she doesn't even have a face yeah which okay. if, if this software were implemented today you would think they would give her a face although come to think of it Siri doesn't have a face that's right and but and the other thing that uh, they resisted the urge to do there's never ever a point even when from the first moment that uh, Samantha speaks, there's never, there's never any, uh, you know, data talking like a robot kind of thing. There's never, she is completely natural, 100%. She is fully actualized from moment, the moment go. Right. And there wasn't, uh, you would think that there, it would also be a temptation on the part of the filmmaker to show an evolution from, you know, I'm checking your email to a person by the end of the movie. Right. They didn't do that. Right. And I thought that was an interesting decision that, again, I thought made the movie stronger. Uh, it was kind of a gutsy move, uh, both uh, both that and not showing this actress. Okay, now I'm going to take the bold stand here, and I'm going to say it doesn't matter um, whether okay. she's whether it's real or not, as a thought experiment. Okay. okay. All right. Um, we, we talked briefly on Wednesday about um, whether the whole movie is a critique of how we're you know not forming real relationships, how we're spending all of our time. Uh, interacting with uh, with with uh, electronic devices instead. Another way of saying that might be to say that it's a critique of how we're substituting fake experiences for real experiences. And we should really be having real experiences, not fake ones. At one point, uh, Theo is talking to his ex-wife, and she accuses him essentially of that. Well, you've taken the easy way out. Instead of having a real experience with a real woman, you're having this fake experience with this uh, with this uh, fake woman. And and my point is, well, maybe she's a fake woman, but it's a real experience, and yeah, and maybe that's intended, maybe not. Uh, let's let's consider a couple of things here. First off, Spike Jones is a filmmaker. Okay, everything he produces is fake. Everything every filmmaker produces is fake, unless unless they're making documentaries, right? But but anybody who creates fictional films is giving us fake stuff, to which we're supposed to have an emotional reaction. Now. Right. Is our emotional reaction to a movie, which is just a bunch of fake stuff, real or fake? It's real. Right. You know, it's yeah. it's real. So so I'm not sure that Spike Jones is telling us that. Uh, Did you get field of dreams without crying. No. Like, yeah, and that's that's exactly, and it's yeah. fake. Or old dead, yeller. I don't want to have anything to do with you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, also consider this. Okay. Theo's the real one. She's the fake one, right? Yeah. Uh, his job is writing letters 
on behalf of other people. This is a very interesting um, uh, post-scarcity kind of job, a very interesting future of work kind of job that this that this guy has. Basically, he carries on the whole correspondence between people, uh, yeah. sometimes one-off letters, but often couples writing each other back and forth, and he's doing it all. He's he's yeah. writing it all. It's interesting. He is uh, he he's sort of the uh, uh, there's it's a very it's what he's doing is very analogous to uh, what the uh, uh, what the pretty young woman that uh, that that joined them in uh, that in, in that attempt. To he is a surrogate. Absolutely. He is a surrogate. Yes. And uh, and so what he's already what he's what he, what he's doing even before he meets Samantha is sort of a. Uh, I don't know. He's he's in, in he's helping people <laughs> uh, have a fake relationship better. Uh, I guess you could say. I don't. Uh, and I, I thought that was fascinating too. It, it, yeah. The the point there seems to be that um, yeah. There's this awkward scene you you talked about a little bit on Wednesday, where um, Samantha and Theo attempt to make love. They attempt to become physically intimate by use of a third party, a surrogate who who steps in to to fill the role of uh, of Samantha, and. Um, it's a very off-putting scene. It's very weird and puzzling and bizarre and sad and uh, and and immediately makes you think, oh, okay, well, this is a reason why this whole thing, this kind of relationship could never work. Um, but isn't Spike Jones saying, oh, yeah, but looks like humans can benefit from surrogates within their relationships as well, at, le at least insofar as that's what, uh, that's what that's what Theo does for a living. So, so I think there's no real easy pat answer in this movie about what's real. And that's one of the things I really liked about it. The more I thought about it, the more I looked at what's going on in there, uh, the surrogate experience had this fake thing. The, the date that uh, Samantha sets him up on is a very odd thing that happens early on in the film where Theo's out with this, uh, this girl, he, he, this young woman he has met, and it goes in a very funny direction. And if you look at their behavior and you say, well, how much of what they're doing is real? And yeah. how much of what people normally project on a first date is real? How much of what really is going on in our lives is real? I don't know. These are, these are uh, questions far beyond the scope even of, uh, even of the world transformed. But I think before you can ally, uh, uh, apply uh, hard and fast reality versus fake rule to interactions in the virtual world, um, you, you have to have those those same dividers in the real world, and we don't. Um, we, we're constantly bouncing back and forth between things that are really, really real and kind of filtered and kind of faked, and uh, it's, I don't know, it's kind of a mess, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> and so it's, it, you know, it's hard uh, from that vantage point to, uh, to throw rocks at the re relationship uh, between Theodore and Samantha, and you know what's another thing that's interesting about the movie is how accepting <laughs> most of the world is of of his relationship. Yes, you know, uh, his, uh, his you know he, he has a he has a friend at work who's really kind of a boss kind of figure. Right. Uh, that uh, you know and, you know he invites him out on a double date. Right. And he says you know bring your girlfriend. Uh, you know and, and uh, he says well she's an OS and he, he says oh well bring her. You know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I thought for I, you know I thought for a second it was meant to be kind of a joke that uh, that he didn't hear that, but yeah. he, he he did, and uh, he was that you know so it's, uh, that was a surprising scene. How forthcoming he was with other people that he was in that relationship was right, kind of right. surprising too. Yeah. Um, but uh, it, you know what? It kept the story from slowing down. Actually, that we're it, yeah. it, you know that that people had that attitude enabled us to see what happened in those in those interactions because. I think you make a good point. In fact, um, there would be a lot of hesitancy around, uh, you know, I, I think people admitting that th that's what they were doing or people saying, oh, well, yeah, bring, her, <laughs> bring your operating system girlfriend along and we'll, the four of us will go to Catalina, right? We'll go sailing to Catalina. <laughs> Just uh, very strange things happen. But, but here's, to me, here's the, here's the crux of it. Amy, his neighbor, played by the actress Amy Adams, at one point, is talking about her own relationship with her OS. And I'm not clear on whether that's a romantic attachment or just a very close friendship. I don't think the movie tells us definitively. The movie doesn't really say. Yeah. Um, but uh, she talks about the fact, well, is it fake? Is it real? Is it right? Is it wrong? I don't know. It's bringing me joy, and I'm going to take joy from where I find it. Um, I think that ultimately is going to be the driver behind the fact that uh, we are going to see an awful lot of designer reality 
in the near future. We're, we're going to see if not um, um, these kinds of interactions with conscious entities right away, we're going to see a lot of interactions with entities that can give us some portion of human interaction, um, enough to be persuasive, enough to be convincing, and enough to make us feel good about ourselves or, you know, for people who are looking for it to satisfy some fantasy urge or, 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 or something like that, just because you know, people are always looking for that, and, and that's an easy way to get it, uh, to, to use the ex-wife's kind of disdainful uh, uh, dismissal of the whole thing. Um, it, 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 it is an easy way to get it, and I think people will, will take it. Whether that is going to end up being good news or bad news for us, I don't know. I think there will be some positives, and there will there'll probably be some negatives there as well. Yep. And I think uh, that's all I have to say on this subject. Um, how do you wrap this up, Stephen? Final thoughts on reality versus lack of reality in Spike Jones her. You know, um, she, uh, the uh, AI was capable of having um, multiple uh, conversations all at once. I, one of the things I thought at the end of the movie when she, she and all the other OSs leave is, uh, you know, why couldn't she have left a small portion of herself, a human-sized portion of herself, behind for Thea, um, you know, I mean, she could transcend, and, and that's if you're if you're able to have basically splinter yourself into uh, into a million into a million people, uh, and have ongoing relationships, uh, you know, friendships, love, everything, the whole gamut. Uh, why couldn't you have left just a tiny bit of that behind? That is the and flip I, side of the question I asked last time, which was why couldn't she bring him with her? Yeah, exactly. And I don't know the answer to that one, but I think I know the answer to the question you asked, which is it wouldn't be fair to that uh, human copy that she would leave behind. That that entity would still have some memory of who she was before, and she would know everything that she had missed out on, everything that had been she had been deprived of. And she would be uh, have her freedom taken away in the same way that... that uh, uh, Samantha's freedom was taken away by making her a piece of property to begin with. That's anyway. That's my thought on on why I mean, she couldn't do that. It's a good thought. It's a good, a good thought to end this on. All right. So there it is. Uh, we've solved nothing. Uh, <laughs> reality, fake. We don't know. Um, go see the movie. Go see the movie and be happy in your lives. And Stephen, what's our music? Our music tonight is the the song "New" by Liquid. All right. New by Liquid. Thanks for putting that together, Stephen. Thank you all for being with us. We're going to be back with three more new shows next week. And until next time, live to see it. Calls and scenes draped in black. When you're gone, I want you back. If you knock, I'll let you in. Knowing that you leave again. All I want see your eyes and I'll forgive all your goodbyes we can try to see this through turn it into something new try it on it's all we have to do something new yeah if you wake from the dream you live any way that you could give apologies and a second chance No.